I'm very excited today. Aren't you excited too? I'm excited because today is the Lord's day. The day that I'm going to meet my Lord, my Savior, the Kings of Kings, Lords of Lords, and the Creator of the universe. The second excitement I have because we have just done with the baptism. And I'm very excited because I have to step out of the pulpit and preach to the congregation. And if you were, you were me, if you were I, I believe you were probably as excited as me. So I have triple excitement today. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Have you ever heard anyone saying that um, it is very difficult to be a Christian? You know, I felt um, very sad whenever I heard a fellow Christian saying that following God's commandment, serving God is burdensome or complicated. God never meant it to be burdensome or complicated and it shouldn't be that way but could you imagine how sad i would feel if my daughter told me papa it is very difficult to be your daughter i could be too controlling i could be unloving or maybe because of that that make her feel, feel that way. So what about one fine day, your spouse suddenly say to you, Honey, it is very difficult to be your husband or it is very difficult to be your wife. How do you feel? You may wonder what's wrong with you, isn't it? Or maybe what's happened to your spouse. It could be you are too demanding Maybe unreasonable or unrealistic expectation, high expectation. But is God too controlling? Yes or no? Is God too demanding, too high expectation on us? Or having too many unrealistic or unreasonable rules? I'm sure no, right? There is nothing wrong with God. So I think being a Christian is simple and easy. God wants us to be His children and be reunited with Him. He doesn't want to make it complicated to us. Remember in the Bible, it says, we are called to be God's servant. The role of the servant is not very difficult. Why? Because a servant's job is to be obedient. All the servant has to do is to obey his master. So to take another example, soldier. A soldier taking part in a great campaign do not know what is going to happen and do not know the grand strategy. They may not need to know it, but what they have to do is to obey the order. So what, is, what are God's order? As we have just read. So he says, Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are com converted and become as little children, you will be no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Is that difficult to enter the kingdom of heaven? No. Jesus says, it is simple, as simple as just want to be a children, a little children. So as we can see, the same question being asked by one of the, one of the lawyer uh, recorded in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 20, 25. It says, And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Actually, the lawyer is trying to um, put up a very, uh, very difficult question, it may be. Sometimes you may 
face a different kind of question that your friends is going to ask you as being a Christian. They may ask you, do you think there is really a God in heaven? I did not see God. That's why I don't believe in God. So as a Christian, how do you answer to them? There's an atheist saying, he don't believe in God because he cannot see God. So he always asks the Christian difficult question. If there is a God, please let me see God. Otherwise, if I cannot see God, there is no God. Somehow, one day, he met a Christian. The Christian gave him the answer. I think you don't have brain. You do not have brain. Why? Because I did not see your brain. If you have brain, you show me your brain. You know, sometimes we may not always need to answer the question being asked by our friends. Sometimes we may meet some silly question. By looking at this uh, question, it says, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? As we look at this word, inherit, it simply, uh, it, it, it simply says, what shall I do to gain into heaven? What shall I do in order for me to get the rights into heaven? Actually, this is the question with a lot of questions. I mean, the question itself is um, having a have, is a problematic uh, question. So they shouldn't ask, ask that way. So this story in Luke chapter 10, it says, what shall I do in order for me to get into heaven? Let's look at this Bible text, this passage, the background of the passage. Actually, it was uh, on the way that Jesus came from uh, Jerusalem, is going to uh, Jericho. He passed by a rocky road. And during that time, he met this, uh, this uh, lawyer and he's trying to explain the question he's going to ask. So here, when the lawyer asked Jesus, what should I do in order for me to get to heaven? So what is the answer from our Lord Jesus Christ? He said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? You know, being a, being a lawyer, we, ha we, we said he has an occupational disease. That means whenever people ask you a question, because of your profession, you will, you will um, answer according to your uh, occupation. So the lawyer, after being asked what is written in the law, all right, he is the one who study law. So he should know all the rules and regulation in the Bible, right? So the lawyer quickly says, he says, Oh, the Bible says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might, and your neighbor as yourself. Actually, it is found in the Deuteronomy, the Old Testament. That is the rule written in the Old Testament. When the lawyer asked, what should I do? But Jesus did not answer to his question, but threw another question. What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? And the lawyer suddenly gave the reason, gave the answer himself. He know this answer. So after saying, love your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. And also, you should love your neighbor. These are the two greatest commandments in the Bible. Love God and love others. And because of that, he quickly want to justify himself. So he put on another question. He says, So, well, who is my neighbor? This is the parable of Good Samaritan. And all of us, most of us, we are familiar with it, isn't it? So this story starts with the intelligent lawyer who stood up to test Jesus and want to justify himself. And later on, Jesus answered his question by telling 
a story of a traveller. A story of a traveller who is in his journey to Jericho. He was attacked by a thief. They robbed him and they beat him, left him for death. And after that, what happened? And there were two religious men passed by on the other side without helping him. And at the end of the story, guess what? At the end of the story, a Samaritan who rendered his help to this needy person. So that is the story. And until the end, he answered the question, who is your neighbor? So what did the answer from, from the lawyer? In verse 37, it says, He who showed mercy on him. Actually, that lawyer, he is a Jew. He don't even want to mention the name Samaritan. He just says, He who showed mercy on him. So Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Have you ever asked the question, who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? Do you ask this question in the church? If somebody says, can you assist the ministry in the church? Can you help somebody? And you may say, who shall I help? What does that mean? It means that we did not see the needs of the church. So the same thing happened to that lawyer. He asked, who is my neighbor? He is asking, who should I help? But here, Jesus answered his question with a story, a story of Good Samaritan. And until the end, Jesus just said, go and do likewise. And I found very interesting point in this, this, uh, this story. And I noticed this is the story. The traveler First of all, he met three categories of people. Did you notice that? Who are the first category? Who are they? The first one, the thief, the robber. Am I right? Who are the second group of people? The religious leader. What we call Pharisees, uh, not Pharisees, the Levites and the priests. And who are the third one? Who is the third one? The Samaritan. So by looking at this, actually, in our Christian journey, these three categories of people can be symbolized as three groups of Christian. I do not know what kind of Christian, what category are you in? Let's look at it. The thief. As the traveller travel, uh, passed through the rocky road on the way to Jericho, he met the first group of people, which is the thief. And what is the motive of the thief? What is that? To get whatever they want, isn't it? They don't care who you are. What they want is what? about himself. So actually, thief is very selfish person because they don't bother what happened to you as long as it brings benefit to me. And as a thief, they don't care about others. Don't you think they care about others? No, if they would have care about others, they will not be a thief, isn't it? What they want is to get something, to get some benefit from you. In the church, let's look at Christian. Sometimes we may find this kind of Christian. When they say, I am a Christian, the word Christian as a title to this person doesn't make the person become holy. Am I right? Yes or no? Have you heard somebody say, when you go to this company or this, uh, this school, the principal is a Christian. Wow, good school. Is that true? The word Christian doesn't mean anything until it really put into practice. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? 
And this group of people, they only care about themselves, even though they say, I'm a Christian. But if they did not practice the principle of the Bible, they are not a Christian. There is no such thing called true Christian. It's just the way we want to practice it in our life. So, with this group of people, they always have this mentality. The men this mentality is always in their mind. What is that? What is yours is mine. And what is mine is, is mine. Have you seen this person? This kind of people in the book? I happened to meet, uh, pay a visitation to one of my friends. And I went to his office and somehow he introduced his friend to me. And during the conversation, we talk about this, north, east, west, south, everything. And somehow, when I mention about Christian, that person suddenly become very angry. I was wondering what happened to him. He said, don't tell me about some, anything about Christian. I don't like Christian. Wow. What happened to him? And after the conversation, I slowly find out that he is very angry with his boss because his boss is Christian. A Christian boss, but the boss did not pay him salary on time. And even so, sometimes he has two months no salary. So he say, what kind of Christian is that? Oh, I'm glad I did not tell him I'm the pastor. <laughs> I'm the leader of this Christian. Oh, you are the one who teach the Christian, right? So, the word Christian doesn't mean anything until we practice biblical principle. Otherwise, we are just like a thief. We are pretending we are a good person, but somehow we want to get benefit from you. But I hope all of us, none of us here are in this category, right? If you are in this category, repent today, all right? What is the second group of people? The second group of people, we see the Bible says, a priest happened to, to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Let's look at it. As we look at the, the, the text, it says, going down, what does it mean? Because looking at the, uh, looking at the sea level, of uh, Jerusalem is much higher than Jericho. So when it says going down the same road, the, it means that what? He is coming from Jerusalem and going through the rocky road and he is going to Jericho. So the same traveler, he, is, he was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. But somehow, when these uh, these religious people, they see the needy person, but they did not do anything to him. So the second group of people, the second type of Christian, what we say is they are, they are coming from Jerusalem to Jericho. And they are self-righteous. When you look at the Bible, what, what people are they, are this group of people referring to? Let me ask you, who are the priests? They are religious people, right? And they, how do they dress as a priest? Nice or not nice? Yes, they have a what? The, what do we call? The bracelet. And then they have jewelry in front of, of them, isn't it? 12 different kind of jewelry. So they dress nicely, tidy, and clean, they comb their hair nicely. So the same thing. When we come to the church, do you see such people who dress nicely, formally? Who is the most handsome in this church? Ah, oh, I'm oh, I I dress formally, right? Just like the priest. Oh no. These are the people actually the Bible is referring to the priest and also the Levites. Where are they coming from? They are from Jerusalem. They could have just finished a ritual. 
That means, as we put into our contemporary, uh, our, our daily life, what is that means? They're just coming back from, from the church. Just finish the baptism, just finish the service, the Holy Communion, and on the way back to Jericho. Are we the second group of people? From Jerusalem to Jericho, we dress nicely, but we do not want to touch the needy. Maybe the priest just afraid that that person might, must have a, a, would, would make him unholy, unclean. Maybe that person is dead, died already, and it will cause him to be unholy, unclean for maybe seven days, 21 days. He just want, want to avoid that. So this is the second group of people. And this group of people, they just concentrate on themselves, self-centered. Are we in this second category? If yes, repent in your heart. Don't have to raise your hand. We don't want to be the first group of people. We don't want to be the second group of people. But what about the third group of people? It's called Samaritan. The Bible says, but the Samaritan, as he traveled, came where, where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and put on the bandage and pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on what? On his own Mercedes Benz. Oh no. In, on his uh, donkey and brought him to an inn and hotel to take care of him. And then after that, it says, the next day, he took out two, I think this is uh, the old, old shillings or uh, the currency in the old time, uh, the denary, the, the and give, gave them to the innkeepers. Look after him. And he said, when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. That means, Whatever he owes you, don't count on him. I'm going to pay back to you. This is the third group of people, what we call Samaritan-like Christian. They have sympathy. They show compassion to the people. As we look at it, it says, they have pity on the traveler, pouring on oil and wine. And he is willing to let them uh, let the traveller sit on his donkey and he promised he will come back and pay for the debt for that person. As you really look at it, actually, when, if let's say, Jesus is the one who sees the traveller, how did Jesus feel? Jesus will do the same way. He is going to pity on them, on the people. As he looked at the lepers, as he looked at the blinds, Jesus felt compassion to that, those people who are in need. And Jesus wanted to heal them immediately. She, Jesus is very uh, having a pity on them. And then when we look at oil and wine, what is that? When we talk about oil, what is that representing in the Bible? What is that? Holy Spirit, and what about wine? Right is what? Is the blood. So this good Samaritan is willing to use the oil and wine to heal the person. And the same person, this good Samaritan, he is willing to put that man on his own donkey. Who is riding the donkey into Jerusalem? Jesus. And the same person, he promised he will come back. The same thing, as we look at this Samaritan, it reminds us that our Lord, our Savior, is this person. He promised that he is going to come back and going to pay all our debt. And the third group of people, actually, when we look carefully, it is actually Christ-like Christian. Am I right? So, there are three groups of people. Who is your neighbor? 
As we said, we are a Christian today. We do not only say it with our mouth, but we do it with our might, with our strength, with our heart. So, as we look at it, the Bible says, Luke chapter 10 and 27, it says, So, we have to, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might. And you should love also your neighbor. Who do you want to be? Not the thief, not the priest, not the Levite, but what? But the Samaritan, Christ-like Christian. May this message continue to remind us to be a, a, a loving Christian that we can bring love and care to the community around us. May God bless you.